Meet Ibo. This is a robotic dog companion that won't eat or poop. Of course, it can never replace a real dog, but it can do almost anything a real dog can do. What makes a robot dog feel real is in its subtle movements. Let's find out how reinforcement learning can be used to make this robot dog dance realistically. If you're new here, make sure to check out the links in the video description and subscribe for more robotics and AI. So the thing with robotic dogs is that a lot of times the motions that have been pre-programmed are very robotic. It's repetitive, it's periodic, it doesn't really tune it for the actual person. So like, for example, if you're at a certain location and its head is looking at you, there's something about it that's not very real because it's not very fluid in terms of adapting to this environment. So this paper from Sony came out recently called DFM D4A Mimic for Expressive Dance Motion Learning, which allows the robot to have more realistic and expressive motions. So the work that they've done is they found a way to have the robot dance while adapting to different things. So they could have certain body parts be in different positions and still repeat the similar dancing pattern in that new configuration. They also tie in ways where the gaze of the robot can also continue while the dancing is happening. So this allows it to have very realistic motions when interacting with people. So the first part of their pipeline is the motion design. So this is where they create animations of the robot moving and use that as a reference to their model. The next part is the motion representation, where they use an encoder and decoder to represent the motion of the robot. The next part involves putting these puppies in a gym where they get to learn how to dance. And then finally, there's a phase two where they learn how to dance and move their head in certain motions. The final part involves running on hardware. We take the train policy model and put it on the actual robot. If you see here, these are some of the results. Some of the main advantages of their DFM model is that the accuracy of the tracking is much more accurate. So if you focus on the leg area when it lifts it, you see that it's at a closer location to the actual position that it's supposed to be at. Another noticeable improvement is the transition between motion. So if you look at the two methods here, you can see when the head is tilting on the left is a jerkier motion, whereas on the right is a smoother motion. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.